Is it almost evening? I've had enough for today. It's time to go home. Was it pushed under the door? The letter was not here before, so I should read it. Hmm, that sounds rather intriguing. I could handle such a case. I have everything I need. I shall find a carriage tomorrow morning and head to Dungenstein Castle. It appears a new case awaits me, and I am on my way to Runkenstein, which has become the scene of an atrocious crime. The forests here are dark and deep. I get a chill running down my spine. A moment ago, the coachman told me that there were only a few miles left and we would be there. The main gate is closed. I shall find a different way around. That is one gorgeous view! Ah, my visions again. I have suffered from visions and premonitions since childhood. Sometimes I see things that seem to be out of our world. But on the other hand, my sensitive abilities have often assisted me in solving cases in which the police have failed. The history of this castle is no different from the history of other castles. However, such knowledge can never be detrimental. Good day, sir. Detective Peterson, I presume? Yes, it's me. I accepted an offer from Mr. Sebastian von Lipnitz, and I shall solve the mystery of his brother's unfortunate death. My name is Peter Schmidt, and I'm the warden of this castle. Yes, I know. Mr. Sebastian has already informed us of your arrival. I would like to speak to the Baron. Will you bring me to him? It would be a pleasure, but I have to leave quickly. It would be best if you met the personal butler of the Baron in the hall. He will show you the way. Uh, I do understand, but before you leave, let me ask you a question. Where were you when the crime took place? I was in my chamber, in the servant's wing, but sadly there's no way I can confirm it. Okay, but please remain available should I have further questions. Sure, I'll be back soon and then we will discuss it. Farewell. Um, sure. Finally inside the castle. I can now begin the investigation. I should speak to Baron Lipnitz first. Is 
it seems that more strange events have taken place at the castle in the past. Do these events have anything to do with the murder of young Lipnitz? Ah, I recently purchased the corresponding newspaper in Munich. that the Baron's mentally disabled son is often aggressive. Even if the police excluded him as the perpetrator, it would not be unnecessary to investigate Helmut. So the Baron locked himself in his chambers. Hmm. I'm going to have to get in somehow. No matter what it takes. This note proves that they heard someone in the hallways the night of the murder. The question is, who was the man? The door has a broken lock. I'm going to need a tool to unlock that door. Ah, this castle seems to have more secrets. The Baron's weak-minded son sometimes runs away and then throws fits around the castle. How does he factor into this case? Could he be the killer of... Not only the assistant cook, but also of Herman? So, the killer broke the cellar door the night the murder took place. But why would he do that? Hmm, there is a fireplace in the ki kitchen. Maybe I can use it somehow. Baron sometimes visits his mentally ill son even at night. Could he be the one who slammed the cellar door? I need to speak to him as soon as possible. Yes, 
so, the relationship between the Warden and the Baron was not exactly perfect. In any case, the Warden had a motive for killing Jan Lipnitz. It could only be because he wanted to prevent the young man from seeking a replacement for him in Munich and ousting the Warden from his Velope job. Huh, I need to talk to that man again. Uh, the history of the Lipnitz family is quite turbulent. Then, there is this assistant cook. Not only she was murdered, but she had an affair with the Baron. Ha! Coincidence! So the Baron handed over the entire inheritance to his sons. In that case, Sebastian had a motive for murder. But then, why he would he write me a letter and want me to investigate the crime? Only if he wanted to point out his weak-minded brother, this criminal. Sebastian was in Dunkenstein the day before the murder. Hmm, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Baron, this is Detective Perez. I need to speak to you. Ah, the Baron is obviously enjoying an afternoon siesta. What can I do to wake him up? The floor is weak at this point. Through the cracks, I see the Baron snoring. Maybe I could use it to make the Baron somehow. Interesting. The Baron obviously knew that Helmut murdered the assistant cook. So the head cook was right. Her notes, which I found in the servant's wing, did not lie in any way.
What the blazes? It's dripping here again. What? But it's not raining outside. Well, now nothing is stopping me from interrogating him. <laughs> I hope the Baron didn't see me through the ceiling. Baron, can you hear me? What the? Who's bothering me again? I said I didn't want to speak to anyone. I am Detective Parison. I came from Munich. Your son Sebastian asked me to investigate the death of your second son, uh, Herman. God, when will it finally end? The police have already investigated. Yes, but uh, they did not come to any conclusion. Let me ask you a few questions. Um, well, what do you want to know? I have learned that the day before Herman's arrival, Sebastian had come to see you first. Tell me why. How do you know that? Well, it doesn't matter in the end. Regular family visit, nothing more. Why... why didn't the two brothers come together? Because they both hate each other. Have for a while now. But that's none of your business. Family matters. It has nothing to do with your case. Oh, well... Is it true that there are tense relations between you and your administrator? I know that you wanted to fire him, and your son Herman was supposed to arrange a replacement for him in Munich. Yes, that idiot has been getting on my nerves for a long time. Could it have something to do with the crime? Maybe he didn't want to lose a well paid job. Him? <laughs> he has anxiety attacks even from children's cries. He's a total nincompoop, but otherwise he wouldn't hurt a fly. And uh, what about your son Helmut? He's not that inoffensive, is he? Please leave Helmut out of this. The boy is not as immoral as you think. Well, supposedly, the night someone committed a murder, someone also dislodged the cellar door. What do you know about that? Nothing. I don't know who did it and why. It couldn't be Helmut. He knows very well that the cellar door is locked for the night, and it would not occur to him to try to escape. And he would not be able to unhinge the door himself in his hazy state of mind. The boy is innocent. He never hurt anyone. Not even your assistant cook. He didn't kill her. Uh, aren't you lying to me, Baron? I found the cook's diary. Ha! You can't believe these hysterical female rantings. Hmm. If I look for her in Ravensburg and persuade her to make a statement, we will see if the authorities will trust her so-called rantings. Yeah, besides, you probably have a big bloodstain in the basement near Helmut's residence, right? Or have you recently removed it? Should I check? I bet you didn't even report the murder of the cook. You wanted to sweep the whole thing under the rug? Being a nobleman, no one will condemn you. But the shame will be unbelievable. Wait, detective. Tell me how much. How much do you want for silence? Ah, uh, don't be a ridiculous man. Your son belongs in a mental institution. So, you will report him? Mm, I'm sorry, Baron. It's my duty. Then go to hell. Baron, can you hear me?
So Helmut was investigated by the famous Dr. Penner himself. His report proves that Helmut is seriously ill and also dangerous. Hell? Who's there? Ah, it's you, detective. Please, get me out of here. The door locked behind me and I don't have the key to that door. The spare should be somewhere in the basement. Is that you, Warden? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, i look for the key. Interestingly, the more I learn about the history of the Lipnitz family, the more it reveals the details in this case. Here is clear evidence that Helmut killed the assassin cook. I will report Helmut to the Ravensburg police station. And it's done. You're free. Thank you, detective. Anyway, 
What were you doing here? I wanted to get a bottle of something good. Usually I would send someone to bring the bottle. But most of the servants are off today. By the way, I found a message in the hallway before. Someone lost this letter and it looked bizarre. Uh, do you want to read it? I put it here on the table. Of course. Hmm, rather interesting. Please do tell me who else has the key to the cellar. Only the Baron has both keys. I only have the key to the outer entrance and the wallet schnitzel has the key to the inner entrance. Have the keys gone missing lately or have you lent them to someone? Neither one. Who recently came to the castle besides Herman? Well, honestly, Sebastian has been here the day before, but you've probably figured that out. And there was a trap with him. They came here almost at the same time, we sent the tramp away, but later, apparently in an unguarded moment, he entered the castle again, and we found him wandering around in the servant's wing. He looked crazy, so we just kicked him out. Quite interesting. Uh, as for you, you're lucky. I can exclude you as a perpetrator of the murder. Really? The message was undoubtedly written by the killer, or the man who had planned the murder. You would not give me evidence against yourself. That would not make sense. You also have told me everything, honestly and truthfully. And the evidence has told me the same. Plus, the message is written on luxurious sentence paper, and on the other side is a stamp from the Munich Post Office. That's a relief. Mm, well... Don't rejoice much. It is possible one of the inhabitants of the castle was the assassin's accomplice. So, I may come back again. Um, good. I understand. I have one last question. Who exactly knew, except the inhabitants of the castle, about the murder of the assistant cook? Sebastian. The same day we found her in the basement, I wrote him a letter. I had already had enough here, and I needed to complain to someone. So, Sebastian knew about the murder. Fascinating. What do you deduce from this? Uh, nothing. Um, let it be. I'm leaving for Munich. Have a nice day. Goodbye. And, detective, if you want to leave through the outside entrance, I'll have the key in the door. Thank you. Lipnitz stinks, and unfortunately, everything shows that Sebastian plays an essential role in it all. Maybe he found out about the maid's murder, so he wrote me a letter asking me to solve this case, hoping I will think his weak-minded brother Helmut was the murderer. In any case, the Baron and Warden are no longer suspicious. The forest is ending, those houses, this is suburb of Munich. In a moment, we will pass through the gate to the city itself. My destination is the Schwabing district, where the residence of the Lipnitz brothers is located. I shall continue my investigation there. I cannot say that the Lipnitz household is cold. If the snow doesn't lie, then I wonder what caused the change in Sebastian's behavior. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, Sebastian acts like a nobleman, but he doesn't treat other people kindly. No wonder they don't love him. At first glance, the Litnitis are a perfect family, but they are not popular with their neighbors. Something stinks here. Yet another enlightened teaching that fills people with love. Interestingly, no one ever mentions how they will benefit from it. So Sebastian did not get much better when he took such a crafty bitch as his wife.
One is obsessed with love for the other, and the other with some strange religion, and the result is a brutally murdered child. I'm speechless. It no longer surprises me. Such an atmosphere. Someone planned Herman's murder. What do we have here? At least I know why the two brothers hate each other so much. Unbelievable. So, Sebastian's wife is also a murderess. This diary is a clear evidence of this. I will hand it over to the authorities. Surely, they will be interested. I don't care how big the scandal is. Yes, the bitch undoubtedly deserved to go in a mental institute. And that is still a mild punishment for her. But people who don't care like Sebastian can be damn dangerous. When one has nothing to lose, and he despises not just any danger, but his own life. As well as the lives of the people around him. Here is clear evidence that Sebastian and the mysterious order is behind the murder of Herman. The murder was carried out by a man who was not from Dukunstein, but at the same time knew it well and arrived at the castle with Sebastian. No one else could do it. And from the corpse hanging here, I think. Sebastian paid for it with his life. I bet he gave the order a proper backshish before. Assuming he hadn't already transferred all his property to them. Anyway, I'm interested in Herman's wing now, as well as the sewers that the mysterious Grandmaster used to frequent. Would you look at that? So Herman knows the identity of the Grandmaster, which is also written in Sebastian's diary. I have to get to Herman's wing.
Poor people. It is unbelievable how unfortunate fate can turn people's lives into purgatory. The puzzles are too difficult. <sighs> so, von Birkenstein is the grand master of that mysterious order. Now everything is starting to come to light, and soon the villain will be forced to come out of the shadows. Besides, he had his wife locked up in a mental institution, as did Sebastian. What a strange coincidence. I wonder how high this plot leads and who else is a part of it. I'm starting to play with fire, but I don't care. Anyway, I'm done here. I will immediately go to Blutenberg to confront the Baron. It's best if I take the sewers like that bastard. When I was a little, I like to climb into the sewers and explore them all, so I know them like the back of my hand. Though, I have no idea where the entrance is from this house.
In the end, the sewer trip was not a bad idea because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten into the Brutenberg Mental Institution. Even so, I spent several hours on the road. Twilight must have come outside. Oh god, I haven't slept in days. I have visited here a few times on different cases, so I know where the Nave Binkenstein apartment is. I don't see how that bastard Binkenstein can stay here. Uh, if this continues, I will soon need some of these drugs myself. The Von Kramberg case recently caused a massive scandal. It turned out that they murdered little girls to turn their bodies into some form of human puppet to represent their daughter. Both were declared mentally incompetent. The escape of Kramberg from Brutenburg caused an equally great uproar. Baron, open the door immediately. I know you are there. Who is it? Who are you? What do you want? My name is Klaus Patterson, and I'm a detective. Is that so? And what do you want? Could you open the door? I have no reason to. What do you want? Okay, 
but I have plenty of reasons to go report you to the police for the crimes of murder, criminal association, extortion, and unfair practices in your obscure religion's community. Duh, you! Such useless talk! As if you can threaten me! All I have to do is nod my head and they will destroy you, understand? Uh, maybe, but before you do, the authorities will receive all the documents I found on the Lipnitz estate that prove your guilt. Don't be ridiculous, man. Those you want to report to me to are my friends. Our order is big and... And also rich, thanks to your manipulations, right? What was this whole comedy supposed to mean to me? Why did you send me to Rukenstein? It's clear to me. It's because of the Cook Helmet killed. You wanted to bring the poor man to justice to draw attention away from you. But what about Sebastian? You got rid of him after he left you all the money. Because you didn't need him anymore. And you didn't want to risk anything, did you? Ah, detective, you're no longer entertaining me. I don't care what conclusions you made. What if we took over the other end? The soft business I could offer you certain benefits. Let's say favors that would make your life less complicated. This would of course include a particular regular pension for eternity. And sooner or later, I would end up with a dagger in my back anyway. No, thank you. I shall decline. So what the hell do you want from me? From you? What could I possibly want from you? Don't be naive. Everything in the world is a price. State yours here. You know, I've had one stubborn habit since I was a kid. I hate criminals. Now I will block the door to your apartment, go straight to the Elector's Palace, and call Lieutenant Warden, a close friend of mine and a former classmate from school. I will tell him everything and prove my words with the found written evidence. He will send a military unit here with me, and then I will have the whole house searched from the attic to the basement. While you are taken away in handcuffs, blue blood or no blue blood, everything has its limits. No reason to go to the police. I know very well that you have them under your thumb. You don't dare do that, you shit! I will destroy you! You won't have a snowball's chance in hell! Really? I have some doubts about that. After all, I wonder what the underground exploration will reveal to us about your walks down into the sewers. What can we find there? You? You bitch! How dare you! You? What? Are you out of breath, Baron? Don't worry. They will come for you in an hour. Your time as Grandmaster is over. Before I go to Lieutenant Warner, I should bar the door of the Baron's apartment so that the bastard doesn't escape. So, that should be enough. Now the bastard is trapped and nothing is stopping me from coming to Niffenburg for the soldiers. I will have the crack taken away in handcuffs. My friend Waldner will be happy to climb a little higher with the Elector. The worst if perhaps behind me. But still, I shall explore the underground of the Institute. I could find other essential clues there. I will not risk the police under Bekenstein's thumb destroying the evidence against him. Must be a reason for putting younger patients down there.
I cannot say that they are interested in caring for patients. institution saved his life. Otherwise, he would have drunk himself to death. But what will his life be like in the future? And it's done. So it's the famous figure of the Munich underworld murdered Sebastian. Who could have guessed it? An ordinary thief from the streets of Munich did it. And behind it all is Dr. Penner. Unbelievable! As a psychiatrist, he abuses his expertise to manipulate the minds of ordinary people. <laughs>
In this case, the police act surprisingly quickly. While I searched the Lipnitz Manor, Helmut was transported here to Blutenberg. It's unbelievable what a sick mind can produce. stories about Wackersburg, but this poor man has obviously gone mad. God knows what he really experienced there. Believe it! Is Dr. Penner behind everything? The famous and respected Dr. Wolfgang Penner. This can't be possible. Apparently, he initiated the founding of the Order of Alexius Kerb, used to impoverish Birkenstein in exchange for a few coins, to be his white horse, and became rich thanks to the members of the Order. Day after Thoreau indoctrination, for good or in, 
transfer their property to the order. And after he squeezed every penny from them, he locked them here in a messy institution or destroyed them right away. That's why all Lipnitzes had to die. How disgusting! I have to stop this. I have to find Dr. Penner. He will have to answer a lot of questions for me. My name is Uwe Kittel, and I'm one of the journal doctors. I fell and... Yes, you fell into the elevator shaft, but you'll be fine. I checked all your bones and you probably didn't break anything. You only have some abrasions and bruises. I've already treated you. Oh, uh, well... So... Thanks. Detective. He already knows about you. He also knows that you had Birkenstein arrested. Something strange is happening to him lately. He must have gone completely insane. He kills anyone who comes into his hands. Please, detective. Go stop him. Who are you talking about? About Penner. Who else would I talk about? Yes. That's why I came here. I want to end all this madness about the order. The notes I found in the Mensa Institution prove Penner's guilt. I will go and stop him. Then all I have to do is wish you good luck, detective. Thank you, doctor. I will need it. This detective is here. What do you want from me, dear friend? You monster. It's all your fault. The murders. Everything. If we fight for a higher goal, small sacrifices are a necessity. Are you ill? I have so much evidence in my hand that I will destroy you with it. You understand? What? Will you destroy me? Let me laugh. <laughs> You know, it's really you who's sick. Don't you remember that you were with me for an examination a year ago? You have premature dementia, my friend. What? What are you saying? I... well... Yes, I remember I... was with you, but... You said the illness is not severe. That despite my hallucinations, I did not lose touch with reality. Shut up, you trickster! Ah, no, 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 no. You're far worse off than you think. Believe me. Shut up, you trickster!
Arab slave. Arab slave. They are looking for a young people without a permanent home for that purpose. People no one will miss. We are born from our mother's womb, springing and roaring into life. But each one of us has his judgment given in advance. And this judgment draws us to believe in the long dead Son of God, whose name is Christ. Yes, there is only one God, yet Christ is no longer the God. Alexius, Alexius Kellner, is the deputy of God. Through his actions, the freedom and liberty of action, to which every living entity has a sacred right, resound in the word at large. Step into you and our crowds, infidels. Leave your destiny, the past, but attire. Think only of your brothers, for here they are filled to bursting. Accept entry into a kingdom where you will find no hunger nor sorrow. Accept entry into mine, mine, abounding in milk and honey, with endless fields of wheat, rice, and sweets. Satisfy yourselves for your souls. Live in eternal peace. against me? But all you say is just your erroneous interpretation of reality. It's all in your head. Investigations, murders, evidence found. Do you even realize where you are now? And what about me? Am I real, or just one of your hallucinations? Shut up, damn it! It's not true. I am a detective. Understand? Ha! You're more of a defective. You're poor because you can do no more than sneak up on unfaithful spouses thanks to your professional impotence. That's not true. A month ago, I helped the police solve the murder of a baker in Ravensburg. I suppose you might be wrong, my friend. No murder has taken place in Ravensburg for almost a year. It's just another one of your delusions. Shut up, damn it. Hans Hirsch, who wrote me the note I found out. I know him very well. He is the nephew of my good friend, whom I remember from my youth as a little boy from a neighboring street. So he settled from Wackersburg. Then he went crazy and ended up here. Ah, the ways of God are unpredictable. Poor sheep that can't escape the yoke and druze of a lying faith. However, you are not lost yet. Find that dark feeling and let it tighten. A wild, roaring joy would gush from your throat. Enter the place with your mind. Forget the world around you, and don't accustom yourself to all the falsities that come round and round from endless distances. If you are looking for Eden, you can find it here in the kidney of the Order of Alexius Kellner. Devote yourself to faith in him. See him and honor him as your father, for you are not destined to be a brother, but a free being, one with rights that no one can restrict. 
surrender to earthly goods, and in return, indulge your desires and in infinite pleasures. sell in my institute until the end of your days. You can do that, you hear? In a moment, the soldiers from Niffenburg, led by Lieutenant Wardner, will be here. Another delusion of yours. There is no one named Waldner in the Elector's palace. I will stop you. Even Dr. Kittle said. You are a dangerous lunatic. Dr. Kittle? Really? <laughs> ah! He hasn't been with us in months. He went to Augsburg, where he set up a private practice. Enough! Enough! I hate enough! Stop manipulating me! I'm not crazy! Everything is true! Everything is real! Stop it, please! Friend, you need help. And treatment. And do not be afraid. I will take care of you. Because I am destined to take care of my loved ones. And then you may also find solace in our order, in his faith. You will be fine with us, you will see. Not that! No! No! so that you can come out of the raw mud and fringes which you will never guard again. Only Alexius, only Saint Alexius Kellner will become your new father, and he will hold you to his chest as his child. What are you doing there, you bastard? I... I wanted to wait for you to... talk, but the door shut behind you. Seriously? What do we have written here? Kunbaskin and the level on the left. Judging by her description, is sure to light the fire, isn't it? Wait, Peterson, don't rush. I... I'm a doctor. I'm a public figure. Pull the lever on the right, and let me out. Hmm, that's a pretty command. Should I kill you, or let you go, and hand you over to Lieutenant Walter? Walter is a fool who can't help you. He's only interested in his career, don't you understand? Didn't you say Walter does not exist? No, no, I did not say anything like that. And you also indicated that you are a hallucination. It's probably time to find out how things are. I'll try to pull the lever to the left. After all, 
killing a hallucination is not a crime, is it? Stop it, man. Let me out. You wouldn't go through with this. And who will find out that I killed the bastard who would turn a mental institution into catch codes? Who established a senseless order to manipulate people and reach himself as an expert and abuse them for slave labor and abandoned our factory? You are a villain. You do not deserve any confession. Peterson. Please. <laughs> you can't. I, I don't want to die. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't kill me for God's sake. <laughs> and one more thing. A year ago, when you examined me, who stated that I was suffering from hallucinations, but that I was aware of their nonsense, and I had not lost the ability to have a rational view. And you, you keep trying to convince me that I am crazy. And now, you are crying in front of me like a small child. I feel disgusted. I'm done with you, once and for all. Go to hell. Maybe you will meet your beloved Alexius Kellner there. Ah, poor hands. So you ended up on this godforsaken hole.
Damn, if that's true and Banner had the mind's world up, I'm trapped here. say is good luck hands. Sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do in your life, but still, you must throw yourself headlong into them, as if there was a driving force in you that forced you to do something beyond yourself. It is a desire for self-realization. Each of you is trying to assert yourself in life, to be a specific being and thus to achieve inner satisfaction. You can't conquer that feeling, and you often have to pass unprecedentedly tricky exits. And so was my case. The desire for justice forced me to fight a heinous evil that had spread like blood death all over Bavaria. Because, as I said, I've had once the born habit since childhood. I hate criminals. The Penner case provoked a vast scandal that transcended the borders of Bavaria. This was followed by a monstrous trial of Birkenstein, in which I also appeared as a material witness. The publicly uncovered Birkenstein's crimes, based on the evidence I presented, as well as the testimony of the discharged patients, whom he and Penner had locked up in greed for their insane motives. And last, but not least, thanks to the testimony of his wife, Stephanie for Binkenstein, who was found to be sane as self-righteous based on a new medical examination. The case has earned me immense popularity. Job offers began to pour in, so many that I did not have time to reject them. The elector, Mr. Maximilian Joseph, honored me at Nifenburg for my merits and awarded me a small lifetime annuity. Baron von Binkenstein was sentenced to lose his property to his wife Stefania, as well as to life in exile from Bavaria. He went to Vienna, where, according to my information, he committed several frauds, which landed him in the sights of the Austrian police, and then allegedly fled to Paris. The rest of his fate is unknown. Although Ilse von Lipnitz had a mental breakdown after Hermann's death, 
she became the universal heiress of the vast Lipnitz fortune. She gradually recovered from the suffering she had experienced and remarried after a time. After the death of old Baron von Lipnitz from Dukunstein Castle, Warden Peter Schmidt did not hesitate to take advantage of the new situation and went to Munich to Schwabing to make his services available to the poor widow of Hermann. My friend Lieutenant Wardner was promoted to captain and became chief of the palace guard in Niffenburg. He is eternally in my debt for helping him in his career. The mental institution Württemberg was out of service for some time after it burned down. However, it was reconstructed at the state's expense to be run under its new head, Dr. Uwe Kittel. The underground factory collapsed, as did the old mines, bearing poor Helmut in their bowels. Hans Hirsch indeed managed to escape from the mines and then went to Vienna. However, when he learned about the turn of events, he understood that he had nothing to worry about. After a while, he returned to Munich, where he lives to this day. And that's the end of the entire story. I lead a reasonable happy life. Moreover, I got happily married about a year after the end of this story. What more could one wish for? And one more thing. Inge von Lipnitz, as I later learned, did not die in Ostersenstein. A story called Castle Wackersburg tells about it. But that, that's another story.